driving to the Students for Liberty Conference uh, downtown Vancouver at the University of British Columbia. It's been raining non-stop since last night at around 8 o'clock, just pouring. Students for Liberty is a national, actually kind of an international organization of students, uh, libertarian-leaning students on campuses all across the U.S. and Canada. This is their regional conference. And uh, I am the first speaker on the roster. Um, so, and I'll be talking about whether feminism is a friend of liberty. And uh, my answer will be no. No, it's not. Uh, what's going on here today is the talk about men's rights, uh, where young boys and men stand in today's society, um, and uh, equal rights, basically, uh, feminism, anti-feminism, uh, talks about both sides and coming at it uh, from different angles in order to find some sort of solution that benefits all. I was really excited to come to this event because I've been to these kinds of uh, events before and I really enjoy hearing what people have to say and getting to know other attendees. This kind of event, it's just, it's eye-opening. It's eye-opening in realizing that men do suffer uh, in almost every aspect of society, uh, same as women. Um, I would just like to see different points of views that tackle um, or bring an awareness for what women suffer and what men suffer. When I first heard about Karen doing this conference, I didn't know much about her, so I read her biography on the Students for Liberty event page, and I read a few articles about her, and I didn't really like what I saw because I was expecting an MRA troll who just made jokes after jokes about feminism. However, when I actually got around to seeing her speak, I found myself pretty much nodding throughout her entire speech. Overall, my impression of the MRA movement is bad because of figures who tried to promote bad behaviors for their own selfish purposes. However, there are MRAs out there, such as people who I know that are at this conference, who are good people and want to make a difference. And I think those people are doing a good thing. They're addressing topics that feminism, that feminists haven't uh, really put much thought or action into and are creating a bigger dialogue into different topics that people need to know about. Karen Strawn um, interests me the most just because I said earlier in, when I was introducing her, I, I, knew what the men, I knew the men's rights movement existed but I didn't know that what they were about really. When I actually went into um, her YouTube videos, looking into what she spoke about, it just it amazes me. I was like, yeah, you know, like men men historically have been oppressed in other ways that you know women just haven't been, such as um, being constricted to go to war, workplace accidents, um, suicides. Like, there's such a whole list that you know I just. Common, in commonplace, you're like, oh yeah, you know, men usually are victims of that, but I never really said, hey, this is a problem. I have been working this for 10 years, I would say, from the time I first heard about um, the libertarian philosophy to wanting to actually uh, spread the ideas and just um, introducing people to ideas that I think um, changed my life and I feel the need to give back. Society would be much better if everyone was a critical thinker, so that's, that's one thing that drives me. Another one is just injustice that I see, and I think a lot of injustice can just be... It doesn't even have to exist. People just have to dig just a little bit deeper into what they're being told, and um, yeah, I think just basically I want to make the world better. <laughs> We're all just heading down to uh, some St. Regis Absolutely. restaurant and uh, we're going to have some food and drinks and uh, hopefully some good conversation. Oh, it was a lot of fun. It went really well. I, I, had, a, I had a good time. So, still a little concerned about tomorrow, but 
I think I'll be okay. Uh, this is um, a get together held by the Students for Liberty after uh, the conference. I expected there to be a large assortment of people with a varied um, history to them with their own perspective on the topics in which they speak, um, spoke on and um, that's what I got. So I really appreciate it. I thought that they were going to be more non-libertarian people, um, people aren't very liberty minded, but they, 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 they were all pretty much uh, libertarian or libertarian leaning and that was surprising because it made me realize that maybe, maybe the liberty movement in Canada isn't that small after all. For me, uh, the things I'd like to have discussed more at these men's rights um, is the actual statistics about uh, the sufferings of men. So such as uh, the homelessness factor, uh, where boys in uh, schools and post-secondary education, young men, uh, who, where are they are suffering. Um, so I would like to see more of the establishments that allow these people to go and volunteer to show support, um, more information about what is actually happening. Because I think when you, sh when you show people what's actually happening instead of just just talking about it in a broad sense, uh, a wide, broad paintbrush, um, they start getting it because they start seeing it. So more detailed stats, more detailed examples, personal stories by both men and women, I think is what's needed in these kind of conferences. So what went into running this conference? Like I said, I've been a libertarian for 10 years, and so I think normally picking speakers would be the most difficult part, but for me it was so intuitive. I've been, so in the past two years, I've attended mm, about 30 conferences. I traveled 70,000 kilometers in total, going to events exactly like this. And I found that uh, the topics tended to be about the same things, about Austrian economics and the merits of the free market, about the constitution, just, um, yeah, a lot of philosophy. And I wanted, I just wanted, I was bored of that, to be honest, and so, this is just my way of saying, hey, this is what I want to see. Right now, I am enjoying the fact that it's not raining. Um, I'm sitting out on the backyard balcony at Lauren Southern's house. It's actually really beautiful and quiet here. And um, I'm enjoying a glass of wine, and I'm having a cigarette. Actually, I'm chain smoking, and I'm just putting the finishing touches on my speech that I'm going to give at Simon Fraser University tonight. So the speech is going to be primarily about toxic femininity. I, I kind of have a thesis that's formed in my head, and I'm just sort of filling in all of the little details with examples and and stuff right now. But um, I'm, I'm going to be contrasting toxic masculinity with toxic femininity, and um, hopefully uh, my ideas will go over fairly well and nobody will get too upset, because I'm really not going to give women or feminists a free ride on this one, so, yeah. I had a few things to say before Karen, Karen started her talk, um, and I kind of wrote it uh, with the assumption that there were going to be a lot of uh, opposing people or people with, with opposing views. Uh, the SFU AMB was, has been labelled anti-feminist as soon as they heard that Karen, that we invited Karen to come speak. So um, I just wanted to um, kind of put people in their place, those who were kind of, uh, whom I anticipated to be hostile, but none of them were there. But I, I, I made the speech nonetheless because I think it was still an important point of like that you're really not doing activism if, if you, you insist that you always hear the things that you agree with. I think the goal of events like the regional conference uh, is like it's crucial the role that it plays in, um, in spreading um, these ideas uh, amongst Canadians because I feel like pretty much Canada is very unlibertarian. It's a does not like personal freedom very much at all. 
But um, people are so coming out of the woodwork and and um, I think people feel like, like islands, like they feel secluded. Um, and then they see, you know, a poster of the regional conference. And then it, it kind of brings people together and, and you, you realize that you're not the only one who, who thinks this way. Thank you for watching our video, and hopefully you enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. And a special thanks to our Patreon supporters for allowing us to even uh, do this kind of thing, because it's not cheap, and your pledges directly help us to do pretty much any of the Honey Badger operations. Uh, if you are considering on wanting to pledge, and you're wondering if you get any perks for it, you do get exclusive footage that you don't get to see anywhere else, so we're not going to upload it on YouTube. Um, and you'll probably, yeah, you will actually get to see the video early before it even comes out. So you get that first sneak peek of um, what's about to be uploaded on YouTube. Uh, so that's always a nice, fun thing to have, too. Uh, I would also love to see what you guys think uh, in the description below. Uh, what are your thoughts on the video, and what other type of content would you like us to do? Uh, would you like us to do more covering events, or maybe bigger, more broad topics? And if so, let us know in the description below. I, didn't, I swear I didn't mean to rhyme that. Thank you for watching.